So today I am super excited because we're going to be talking about a topic that, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but since I am an advocate for good health and mental health, I'm always researching and looking for different avenues and different techniques that we can use to alleviate whatever is happening to us. So today I have a very special guest and she's an expert in what we're calling tapping. And you're going to find out all the ins and outs. So stay until the end because she's going to give us some really cool information. Hi, Terry. How are you today? Oh, hi, Monica. What a great intro. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I hope to share it. I'm just really thrilled with it. And tapping, usually when I'm introduced as tapping, people think that we're going to start dancing. And <laughs> actually, tapping is a nickname uh, for a short name for uh, EFT or emotional freedom technique. Tapping is actually... Uh, it's nicknamed that because you literally are tapping on the body. And so um, I call my process prime tapping. And so we're not, uh, I just wanted to let your audience know they don't have to worry about putting on any tap shoes. Uh, this is actually <laughs> tapping on, on their body that they're going to learn. <laughs> See, that's what I thought when I first was introduced to this way back. A friend of mine, uh, her name is Dr. Simone Alicia. One day she said, come here, I want to show you how to tap so you can relax. And I went like, what is she talking about? And I did it that one time and it really helped me. And I wish I would have just kept on going, but I've forgotten much about it. So that's why I wanted to, when I found you, I was like, oh my God, because I kept seeing you out there, not only helping people, but you were in the schools and all that great stuff that I want you to talk to us about. And this technique can alleviate a lot of anxiety, a lot of the, maybe like the depression and, and illnesses. So please share with us, what is this tapping about? Tapping, what they have discovered, it's actually uh, based on ancient acupuncture points. That's, you know, if anyone's ever gone to an acupuncturist, they put needles in very specific places. And they've discovered that there's meridian endpoints kind of little bundle points, entry places, and meridians is our energy channels. Everyone, we all know we're energy. Everybody kind of learns that about the atoms and all that. And so this actually works at the, what they've discovered, which is a good thing. So we don't have to have needles always poking in us every time we want to relax a little bit, is they've discovered that by using our fingers, because we even have the meridians on our fingertips, so by using our fingers on these certain points, these specific points, it sends a calming signal through the body. It literally has been tested, proven, it lowers cortisol, which is the primary stress hormone. And with that, it ends up creating this calming sense of control. We get to basically, as I say, take back control of our life. Truly. Well, that's what I'm all about because I, I feel that controlling and being able to control what's happening to us and everybody has different situations, you know, but if we can learn to control it and, and, and it's going to be different for everybody. So I understand that there, like you said, there's different points that we use that's go, that we're going to, and sometimes there's some verbiage to it and this can be done many times during the day or once a day. Uh, kind of like a meditation if you want to. So can we run through like a quick little demo of how tapping works so people can see that? Well, before I go into the demo, I love to share, as you see on my chart here, where there are specific points, and I'm going to show everyone those points, but <clears throat> I have here a medical device that is actually used for acupuncture, and it's called an AcuPen. And I love to share, in fact, you probably do the points you were saying, you don't even realize it. You know, it's like, oh, I wish I remembered the points. We do them intuitively and don't realize it. When we are stressed, we are hand naturally often, headache goes here, goes here. We're trying to remember something, it goes here. So those are actually the points we do. So we'll just jump right in, you okay? Yeah, let's so, do it. Okay, so as far as the verbiage, 
the verbiage just doesn't isn't as important as the motion or the feeling. If you're feeling anxiety and you're thinking, oh, you know, I've just I've got too much going on. I'm overwhelmed with so much I have to do today. Then that's the perfect time because so many times we're so overwhelmed we don't get anything done. We're just like, oh, forget it. I can't do it. So so that's the time. So the side of the hand right along here is where one of the places that is often started. It's often called a setup. And you can use either side, as I said, and you start and state what your problem is that is really causing you to want to tap. So say you're, you're overwhelmed. Even though I'm so overwhelmed today and have so much to do, and now you say an affirmation of something that would be a positive. So when we're not feeling good about ourselves, what's a good affirmation? Saying something that we love and accept ourselves, or we, you know, we really are okay with ourselves. So right. even though I'm overwhelmed, I feel overwhelmed today, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Okay. And the, I like to do that a couple times because our monkey mind needs to focus in and kind of reset when we're tapping if you'll notice we're tapping i don't know if you can hear this kind of like you're knocking okay? okay so about that level not so light but about there so even though i'm so overwhelmed today i choose to love and accept myself even though i am so much to do today i am okay with the way i feel even though i'm so overwhelmed today and I don't know if I'm going to get anything done. I accept myself and how I feel about it. And then we can go through the points. And you can start at the top of the head if you want. And you just sort of see how I just, it's right at the top. And you say your issue. I'm so overwhelmed today. And the next one is the eyebrow. It's right here where the eyebrows start. I go across so I can get them both at one hand. But you certainly doesn't matter. And you state your problem again, that you're feeling, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know if I'm going to get anything done today. And then the next point is right here on the side of the eye. It's not back at the temple, but it's right on the bone. You feel if you follow the bone. And I wear big glasses and I can have it there. And you state your thing again, how you're feeling. Oh, I'm just such a failure. I can't get everything done. And then you come down. The next point is under the eye and right on the bone, not down in the cheek. Remember when we were doing right. that? And you're tapping there. I'm so overwhelmed. Then the next point is under the nose. It's right here in the middle. Okay. And you feel your feelings. Oh, I just have so much to do. And then the next point is, un is under the lip. Some people call it the chin, but it's really in that groove there. Mm -hmm. And you're tapping there, and you really state how you're feeling again. Oh, I just feel so overwhelmed. I don't think I'm going to get anything done. It's just too much for me. Then the next point is the collarbone. And right underneath where you feel your collarbone there, it's right underneath it. And you can tap there. Some people use one hand. It doesn't matter, once again. And really state how you're feeling again. So much to do today. It just really feels overwhelming. Then the next point is called under the arm. And under the arm is literally, yes, it's not in the armpit. It's about four inches. And some people call it the hug because you're literally like going across. But it's whatever is comfortable for you. And it is, and you state your feelings. <sighs> I have so much to do today. But, and then sometimes you start already feeling a little better just from tapping and say, well, I could do part of it maybe. You kind of start, your affirmation starts opening up to accept and see possibilities. That's the point of tapping. And then you take a deep breath. Now that is just the basic points. 
truly when you're doing it for yourself at home and your and your audience you don't say the points you just go through the points and you're just feeling them you're just literally going through them so i have a question so you you started with the problem in the affirmation but then as you moved around you were just stating what was the problem you didn't do the affirmation so basically you go around with what the issue is and then when you start feeling better then you start incorporating and you can just go around it and around it as many times until you feel okay is that how i understand that is exactly right it goes against all the so many positive thinking in fact many people are afraid they're going to be like I'm going to be tapping in this negative thing. And actually, as you might have heard the saying, you know, what you resist persists. You know, it's like we want to believe that we can get it all done or that we're going to, that we feel good about ourselves and what we have to do. But there's that part of us that is saying, you know how you didn't do that last time? And it's like your way to that, you know, it telling us a negative for whatever your particular issue is. And so, your truth is where your power is so you tap on the truth of how you feel which is not good and as you're tapping and it takes maybe about but usually by the third time around stating your problems your problem starts literally shifting it okay. makes a cognitive shift where you start one it feels silly to even say the words and it's like well, you know, yes, I have a lot to do, but, you know, I'm okay with it. You know, I usually get it done. Or your mind literally starts shifting into a positive on its own when you, when you actually let that bubble up, the negative that you've been trying to suppress and deal with. Well, when you actually bring it up and acknowledge it, then it's able to dissipate. And it's able to like reshuffle and have leave room now for that positive affirmation okay. where I think so that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand that sometimes bringing up that negativity and then letting it go it's like the biggest shift ever because they think oh I don't want to be thinking about this negative things I want to put positive 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 but it, it, it really it's kind of like the reverse you bring in the pot the negative and they start working it until it's just kind of, just kind of, you know, flies away, I guess, right? It, it, it truly shifts. It shifts. It's not that it's forever forgotten. Uh, uh, as far as if person, it works wonderful for PTSD and, and past traumas that come back to haunt us in life. So it's certain things. So we can address that and it gets where it doesn't have the charge. We still may we we it's not that we've forgotten about it but it just doesn't have that startle that same energy because now we've learned to process going back to control as i started you have control of your emotion and now you are able to basically put it in another file and move forward with it like that was then this is now that is amazing you know and that's why i talk about becoming your own superhero because you kind of create your own power by doing this and, and I think this is what's so great about when you take this like you take this to the schools and you're teaching the kids and they're teaching the teachers yeah. how to utilize this in their classroom to, to to change the patterns of the kids and I know that there's a cool story of, that you had told me the other day about how the performance of the kids would you mind sharing that real quick for us well, I will. I have numerous stories. I have stories where the kids have shared, where I've learned that their basketball team that had not won a game through the whole season, and they had a lot of upset with their teammates. And when the team tapped and dealt with how they, you know, even though we haven't won, they, you know, we're a great team anyway, and they tapped on other little issues they had with their agenda. They, I was texting by the mother that they won three out of four games that time they had not won the whole season and i had numerous uh stories of sports results but the one that i think you're talking about <clears throat> is particularly was exceptional i've had consistently 
10 to 20% through the years of a test grade improvement by utilizing tapping before tests. For the classrooms that implement it, the kids, these, uh, just the results are better. They are able to remember, they're able to focus. This one sixth grade teacher wrote to me that last school year, I used your Tapping with Terry program for the first time in my, with my sixth grade class. I showed, now here it is, a 30% increase in state test scores, which put most of my students in the exceeds level. And that is just I, awesome. And I followed up, I, I, that was just totally, he just volunteered this information because he said, he literally told me the principal contacted him because his scores were so off the chart. And he said, well, I've been using that tapping that Terry had done uh, in the class. I love that. And I know that you created some kind of a manual for people where they can actually learn exactly how to maneuver through this. And, and a little hidden secret that I don't have. <laughs> okay, um, well, I like to How do you do something? But you know, we both are so blessed because you were with Jack Canfield, I was with Tony Robbins, and somehow, see, that, that those minds of ours. Synchronicity, yes, we, yes. We found each other. And, and, and going through depression for me and, and, and anxiety and knowing that so many people, especially in the kids going through this, I wanted to offer so many different alternatives, but this is, is, is good and it's simple and, and, and it, it works. Yes, so it truly works. What I did is I've been for the last couple of years as I've been going to the classrooms, I always leave the teachers with a few scripts that they could practice with and, and a chart and, and that sort. So that things that they could use to apply after I leave their school. And um, then I put one of the times I was getting ready, I put it together in an Amazon uh, booklet it's called Tapping with Terry, Improving the Classroom Experience. They can get it on Amazon. I also have it available on my website, Tapping with Terry. But um, in it, I have not only scripts that teachers can use for test or for unhappy thoughts, depending on their grade and their student development. There might be, there's some that are for very simple for the primary grades. And then there's some that are set up more for the middle school age, maybe public speaking, some of the exams, things of that nature. And then there's charts in there for them to know the parts. And also I address things that the teachers can learn to use for their personal life before they go into the class because the teachers have a lot of anxiety themselves. Um, you can only imagine, right, how we are with our own kids and then they've got 30 plus kids they're, they're educating. So this is an incredible tool that I believe every classroom um, really should be using or could be using. Well, I think it should be used by everybody because you know, we all go through situations and, and then it just becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger issue. We don't know how to manage it. And, and I think this right here, it, it, it could be good for pretty much anybody should know about this. Anyone. The reason yeah. I, I, I'm teaching actually, because I've been busy uh, going to schools. I travel all over and, and uh, I have started July 2nd. I start a uh, five-week program to educate and train other people all the ways to introduce tapping into the classrooms and so that they can know how to introduce it into the school systems, whether it be assemblies. Some of the most middle schools are by assembly, even though there's um, uh, whatever different instruments. I have all the different things for them that they'll learn, they'll also have an in-depth manual, much more than actually this manual, and so that they'll have all the tools to then, when school starts, come by September, they'll be ready to go out and introduce it, because the reason I'm so interested in getting this into the schools is that's where they can, it can make such a larger um, uh, change, because I've experienced this already by doing this these many years, is that if, with the teachers using it, then they want their kids to use it. When the students are using it, the parents start using it. And it really becomes a ripple effect. So yeah. much more of a volume because then the parents are interested, well, what is my, what are they doing? What I see them in there studying. 
I've literally had them studying and and uh, tapping, and uh, then the parents are didn't know what they were doing. So it's very good to get it out there, and I believe I want as many as possible to learn my prime tapping. It's the way I've integrated different ways to work specifically for the students and to have it engaging for them so that it's not just something that they've got attitude with or something more they have to learn that they're already feeling like they're learning too much. So I really show them how to introduce it so the students will want to engage in it. I just, I just feel that this could be that piece of the puzzle that a lot of people are missing. I'm going to make sure and put all the links under the description of this video so everybody can either get in touch with you or go to Amazon. Everybody should buy this, this publication. Because, <laughs> seriously, because I learned tapping one day and then I forgot. So I think it'd be a great way to have it there and, and share it with your family and friends. So, okay, close this great. up for us, dear friend. Okay, well, thank you. And the best way to find me is actually if they want a one on one or more direct questions, is directly on my website, Tapping with Terry. And uh, Facebook, I'd love for them to um, find me on Facebook. I'm Terry Mays or Tapping with Terry. And if they at all are interested in uh, signing up and learning more for the educators program, uh, Tapping. Uh, they can message me and I will give them the details for that and we can get started and start making the change in the world we want to live.